Welcome back to another SketchUp tutorial. Today we're going to create one of my favorite activities, and that is the pegboard toy. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at how to create the legs, the base, as well as the pegs. In a later tutorial, we'll go ahead and add the mallet into our pegboard toy activity. So the first step is to create our pegboard legs. And in this case, we're going to need to create two of these to hold our base in the air. Now we're going to go through and look at making one leg and then turning that leg into a component so that we can later duplicate that for the opposite end. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we're going to make our first leg in SketchUp for Schools. So we're going to go ahead and first by starting with a front view, we're going to start to sketch that front profile of our actual leg. We're going to do this by using the line tool on our toolbar. So we're going to go ahead and grab the line tool and we're going to go ahead and start at the origin by simply clicking once. Once we click once, we're going to go ahead and add the height of our leg. Now our pegboard leg is going to measure at four inches. So we're going to go ahead and type in the four and hit enter. From here, we're going to go ahead and give it its width, which is going to be 0.75, select enter. And then we're going to go down and we're going to make this little cutout just a little bit down that actual leg. So we're going to make this one inch. We're going to go in a little bit so this will support our base and this is going to be 0.375 and then we're going to go down another three quarters of an inch back out to the side which is another 0.375 and then we're going to go all the way back down to the bottom click once and then go back to the origin now that you have that front profile we're going to need to push pull this back three inches so go to your toolbar, you're going to select the push pull, and you're going to go ahead and click on that front profile, and we're going to go ahead and push that back. Go ahead and enter your three inches and select enter. At this point, you have your general profile of your leg. But before we make this a component, we're going to want to go ahead and add a little color to this. So go ahead and select your paint bucket. And when you select your paint bucket, notice that if we select one of our sides, it's only going to paint one of the actual faces. So for example, if we click on this green and select, it's only gonna select that green. However, if we triple click on the shape and then select the color, it'll paint the entire shape. Now you can paint this whatever color you would like. And if you'd like to give this a little bit of a different material, remember you can use your browse option. We can go down and find a specific type of material to use. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use a wood feature that will allow me to give this more of a natural look. Now, once your material list loads, we're gonna go ahead and select one of the categories that best fits your pegboard toy. In my case, I'm gonna go ahead and select the wood feature, and I'm gonna go ahead and select my image that I want to add, and simply click on the pegboard leg. Now, once you select this, what you'll notice is that the image that's added is quite grainy. In order to edit this material, we're gonna go back up to our material list, select the in model home button, select your material that was just chosen, and we're gonna go ahead and edit that material. From there, you're gonna notice that the width is set to five feet. We're gonna go ahead and simply change our five feet to five inches and select off the shape. Once you do that, go ahead and click done, and you're gonna notice that your pegboard leg has a better wood grain finish than what was previously added. Now, before moving on to our next part, which is the base, we're going to want to go ahead and make this a component. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and select the entire shape, go ahead and right click on it, and we're going to go ahead and select make component. Go ahead and give your name, which is going to be pegboard leg. And from there, we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Now that you have a component, we can simply duplicate this at a later time and make this the other side of our pegboard toy. Now that we've created our pegboard leg, the next step is to create the base, which will basically hold our square, triangular, and circular pegs in our pegboard toy. So in order to do this, we're gonna to need to use the model of the leg that we've already created. We're gonna go ahead and start by modeling right off the front to draw that base. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and take my leg and move it over a little bit and then we're going to go to a front view. Once you're in your front view, we're going to need to select the rectangular tool and we're going to go ahead and select this upper left hand corner using our green axis. Once you click, you're going to drag that rectangle out and we're going to give this a width of 5.75 by a height of 0.75. Now if we go ahead and take a look at this in an isometric view, we have a general front view of what our base should look like, but we're gonna need to go ahead and grab the push pull and we're gonna go ahead and push that back an additional three inches. Now that you have the base created, we're gonna go ahead and add that second leg. In order to add that second leg, we're gonna go ahead and select the component, which is our leg, and you're gonna select the move tool. Now before clicking on the leg, you're gonna to want to put this into duplicate mode. And in order to do that, you need to hit the control button on your keypad. Once you hit that, you'll see a little plus sign next to your move tool. You can simply go ahead and click on one of the corners and now we can go ahead and drag that out. Go ahead and click to lock that into place. Now what we'll notice is that my leg does need to be rotated around in order for us to basically make this part of the toy. We're gonna do that through a top view. Once we get our top view, we're gonna go back to the move tool, find your rotate, and we're gonna go ahead and click on this bottom left-hand corner. Make sure that you are on the blue axis, not the red. So once you have that blue axis, we're gonna click once, and we're gonna draw a line straight out to the left and click once. From there, we're gonna go ahead and rotate on that axis 180 degrees. Once you have it rotated 180 degrees, Go ahead and select by clicking on the mouse. Now, while we're in our top view, we're gonna go back to the move tool and we're gonna need to take this and move this backwards. So I'm gonna click in that upper left-hand corner and I'm simply gonna move that up until I get right onto that green axis. Now, once I'm there, you can also move it in a little bit, but we wanna make sure that we are perfectly straight with our pegboard base. Now I'm gonna go back to my front view and from here, I'm gonna grab that bottom right corner and I'm gonna drag that in until it is on edge, or on this case, we're gonna be on the red axis. Now, if we take a closer look to inspect, you're gonna notice that we're not perfectly there. So we're gonna to need to do some minor modifications and I'm just gonna simply move that until it reads endpoint. Once it reads endpoint, go ahead and inspect, but we should be perfectly lined up with the legs and the base. Now we're ready to go ahead and start adding our holes to the top of the pegboard. So in order to do this, we're gonna draw a couple lines which we are gonna use as construction lines. So we're gonna grab our line tool and we're gonna to wanna to find the midpoint and we're gonna draw a line straight across. Now we've divided this into a top and bottom part of the pegboard base. Now from here, we're gonna to need to go back and we're gonna divide this into thirds. So in order to do this, we're gonna find the midpoint and draw a line down, and then that will give us an additional midpoint on the left and an additional midpoint on the right. Now your square and circular holes are pretty easy. The triangle is where it gets to be a little bit more difficult. So we're gonna start off by using our circle. So we'll go over to our polygon tool, select circle, and remember we are using a radius for this, so we want our hole to be one inch, so we're gonna add a dimension of 0.5 for the radius. Once you go ahead and lock that in, go ahead and grab your rectangle tool and we're gonna go ahead and select the center. Before you do this, we're gonna want to make sure we create a rectangle from center and not from the end point. So in order to do this, we're gonna go ahead and hit the control button and that will give us a rectangle from center. Now go ahead and click on that center point and we're gonna drag that out and it's gonna be one inch by one inch. Now you have your rectangular peg and your circular peg, but we need to create this rect or this triangle in the middle. So in order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and select that rectangle tool, but we're gonna go down and find polygon. Now, before we do anything else, you wanna make sure you change the sides to three and select enter. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and select that endpoint. Now for this, we're gonna drag this up, making sure that our triangle is perfectly aligned. And we're gonna give this a dimension of 0.7 inches. Once you select enter, you're gonna notice that your triangle is not aligned with the square or the circle. We're gonna go ahead and use our selection tool and we're gonna go ahead and delete those inside lines. 
Now, once you delete those inside lines, we're gonna be able to basically move my triangle down. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click until I get those blue lines. Once I get those blue lines, I'm gonna go back to the move tool and I'm gonna select this bottom endpoint and I'm gonna drag this down till it gets to be even with the other shapes. Now that I have it lined up, I'm gonna go back to my selection tool and here's where we need to do a little bit of editing. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you take your time, click on each of those individual lines that we see and we're gonna go ahead and simply delete those lines. Now you can use the eraser tool or you can simply click and just hit delete. Be careful not to erase any of the other parts of your shape. If you do, you could always undo it, but take your time and make sure all of those lines are deleted. So now that we're ready to go ahead and basically remove some of that material. So we're gonna go back to an isometric view where we can see those, and we're gonna go ahead and use our push-pull tool. Let's go ahead and click on the square and we're gonna drag that down 0.75 inches. Same thing with our triangle and one more time for our circle. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at our top view, what you're gonna notice is that we have removed the entire base for those shapes. Now, the last thing we're gonna need to do before we create the pegs is give this a little bit of color. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna triple click on that shape and we're gonna go ahead and right click on this and we're gonna make this a component. So just like the pegboard leg, we're gonna simply call this pegboard base. Go ahead and select OK. Now once that saves, we're gonna go ahead and make sure it's highlighted, go back to your material list and select whatever material you would like to add. Now that you have your legs and your base, we're ready to move on and create the pegs for our pegboard toy. Now that we've created our pegboard leg and base, it's time to go ahead and make the pegs that will be inserted into our base of our pegboard. Now we're gonna be using the dimensions that we've created for each of the holes on the base, but we are gonna be making each peg three inches in height. So the first step is to go to a top view and we're gonna go ahead and use our hand tool and we're gonna go ahead and slide that base over. Give yourself a little room to work. The next thing we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna go and select our rectangular tool and we're gonna go ahead and off to the right, draw a rectangle that is one inch by one inch. Once you've created your one inch rectangle, we're gonna go ahead to an isometric and using our push pull, we're gonna go ahead and pull that up three inches. Now we're gonna go ahead and use our selection tool by triple clicking and let's go ahead and give this a little bit of color and then we'll go ahead and move that into place. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this red and then we're gonna go ahead and change our view once we get this into the correct position. Now that I have this selected, I'm gonna to need to select that move tool and I'm gonna select the back left corner and move that into place until we see where it says endpoint in pegboard base. Go ahead and click to lock that into place and then we need to go ahead and change that view so that we can see this from the front. Now we're gonna go ahead and use that bottom right corner and we're gonna go ahead and make sure we move that up so that it is on the blue axis. And you're gonna to wanna to move that up so it is about even with the pegboard leg. Now, once you have that in place, this is a good time to go ahead and rotate around and make sure you inspect that your peg is properly placed. Now that we have it in place, the next step is to go and create the next peg. So let's go ahead and slide him over. And this time we're gonna go ahead and select our circle tool. Now remember with your circle tool, we need a one inch circle, but we are focused on the radius, so that's gonna be 0.5 inches. Again, go ahead and change to an isometric view and using your push pull, let's go and pull that up three inches. Once you select your shape, go ahead and give this a color. We're gonna go ahead and make this blue. Now that we have that in place, we're gonna go ahead and triple click again, make sure it's highlighted, and using our move tool, we're gonna go ahead and select one of the endpoints and we're gonna go ahead and rotate around so that we can make sure that it matches up with our pegboard base. Once that's in place, go ahead and go to a front view and we're gonna click the bottom and we're gonna again move that up so that it is about even with the pegboard leg. Again, if you need to back up a little bit, go ahead, move him up just a little bit more and then from there we should be good. Make sure you're on the blue axis and there we go.
Again, go ahead and rotate around, inspect your piece, and make sure it is properly placed. The last step is our triangle. So let's go back to our top view. Using that hand tool, we'll slide it over. Then we're going to go to our polygon. Make sure that your polygon has three sides. And once it does, we're going to go ahead and click on that red line. And make sure when you drag this up, you see that green axis. Go ahead and type in your measurement of 0.7 and hit enter. Now we're ready to go to our isometric and using the push pull. Again, let's pull that guy up three inches and let's give him a little color. We're going to go ahead and make this yellow. So let's go ahead and triple click on our shape, select your color, and there you go. Now for this one, we're going to go back to that move tool and let's grab that top corner and we're going to move that just so it snaps right into place. Last step here is to simply go back to that front view and grab that bottom corner and make sure that it is in line with the other pegs on your pegboard toy. Go ahead and inspect, make sure everything looks good, and now you have your pegboard toy with the pegs inserted into the base.